Okay, so if I scroll up and down Cubase, the Behringer follows like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But as soon as I step with the Quitter keyboard to track 9, the Behringer loses it. I have to manually step forward and then it shows 9 selected, 10, 11, 12 as I step with the QWERTY keys or with the mouse. Yeah. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, etc. Okay, so bank, uh, controller bank switching isn't being sent out from SX, so the Behringer will not follow it around. But as you'll see by the end of this video, that's not a huge disadvantage. It's, it's a pain, but the BCF still functions in other ways, surprisingly. It will follow things around, but just the faders and pan don't follow things around. It's bizarre, but anyway, here we go. So we'll get into that at the end. I'll show you more about that navigation. But basically, just like in uh, logic mode, emulation mode, this is the volume and pan button, uh, EQ, inserts and VSTIs, and sends. So I tend to start with it left, left in default for pan and volume. And if you drop your channel thing on the left here down in Cubase, you can scroll down to track 12. Uh, if the Behringer isn't showing track, isn't in the block of 8 uh, from 9 to 16, let's say for example I had track 24 selected, the Behringer hasn't moved forward to, to select 17 to 24. So um, what you do is with whatever tracks highlighted here on the arrange page of Cubase, if I just step forward with the preset keys, as soon as I see an illuminated lamp, that's the selected channel in SX. So I know that's 24, and if I move it, there you can see the fader moving for 24 and the pan. That's mute, and if I hold down the shift, oh, oh, sorry, the upper shift, that's solo. Whoops. Oh yeah, you've got to let go of that before that. Okay. So solo, solo off. If you solo a channel, and then step around, the solo follows whatever is the selected track. Turn the solo off. Okay, so mute, solo. <laughs> okay. If you if you get lost, like I said, let's say I scroll up to track nine, the Behringer hasn't followed, step back, oop, there's track nine. Let's say I step forward to track twenty-nine, step forward, oh, there's track twenty-nine. Volume pan. Okay, so that's the extent of how the faders and pan and everything follows the SX around. SX will follow the BCF. Yeah, if I step back, track one, yeah, track four, track eight, step forward, nine, yeah, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, step forward, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. You know, the Behringer just steps in blocks of eight through the arrangement vertically of how your tracks are arranged. So I've arrived at um, audio track 32, stepping forward to the next block of 8, I'm into my um, MIDI 1, 2, 3, 4 to, to 8, and again 9 to 16, step forward one more, I'm then in Cubase in my groups, group 1, group 7, group 8, step forward one more, I'm in my send effects, send effects 1, send effects 7, send effects 8, track, ok? So the only thing is, when you're scrolling up and down here, in Cubase like that, back to track one, the Behringer doesn't follow. But like I said, if you get lost, let's say I'm on track 13, all I do is step back, oh, there's the illuminated light, that's 13. Fader, pan. Okay? So now let's go back to track one. Step back, one is illuminated, fader, pan. And let's look at first the EQ. Okay, so moving on to the EQ, uh, what I'll do is I'll open out the EQ panel on the left hand side, so as you scroll up and down the tracks using the QWERTY keyboard here, you can see the channel change in here, and that's the EQ. Okay, so these four buttons um, in Mackie control mode, like in logic mode and the other emulations, they switch between the modes that the that the BCF does with the top section of the mixer here. The faders always stay doing volume. And basically, this is volume and pan. That button is EQ. That button is insert some VSTIs. And that button is sense. So we'll step up to the EQ. And when you're in EQ mode, you can see the BCF view here changes to say EQ and which channel you're on. You also notice here it says page one of two. 
and on the bearings here it says when you step to the EQ it says 102 and using the page buttons here you step up and down from page 1 of 2 to page 2 of 2 and what happens in this mode is the top load of uh, pots here which would which in this button mode here do uh, control the pan in EQ mode these pots become the EQ bands and the way it works it splits them in half so the first four is EQ band 1 the second four is EQ band 2 step up a page the third lot of four is EQ band three and the fourth lot of four is EQ band four so EQ band one EQ band two step up a page EQ band three EQ band four okay so we'll start on page one and of each group of four the last one is the on off switch you just tweak it clockwise and the LED display illuminates fully and you can see over here the EQ switching on and off the low band the low mid band, step up the page, the high mid band, and the high band. Okay. So, for example, if we go to the uh, the low band here, switch it on, and then you've got these three pots to do the actual controls. This is the Q, or in the case of the low and high EQ, it starts at the low shelf for the low, or the high shelf for the high, and then you turn it, and it starts operating the Q. If you switch the EQ to be a parametric. Okay, and then this is your frequency, and this is your gain, cut or boost. Okay, so look, like for example, that's a low shelf there, and it's uh, 140-ish hertz. Then uh, the second band here, we'll put the Q up a bit. We'll tweak it into about two and a half K, and we'll just give a little boost. We'll step up to EQ band 3, that lot of 4, switch it on, EQ band 4, the high EQ, that's the on off, so we've got a high shelf on, uh, what I'm going to do is tweak that and set it into a parametric mode, set the frequency, and a little tiny boost at 10k, and then this lot of 4 is the uh, high mid, and um, again you can set your Q so I'll set it at 1k roughly and uh, just do a little cut there at 1k and if you look at the equaliser curve that's the EQ curve we've created and that's how your EQ works and uh, if you move to channel 2 you can see the EQ is all blank change to channel 1 there it is yeah, so you can move around the channels now interestingly what happens when you're in EQ mode is if I scroll down in Cubase like this, and remember the BCF has this limitation using SX that it doesn't bank shift uh, and jump from the next to the next to the next block of eight channels. So if I scroll using the QWERTY keyboard to channel eight and then go to channel nine, the Behringer doesn't follow. All right, so move up to the next block of eight channels. Like I said, you've got to step forward manually using the preset button, and there you are. There's channel nine, but the interesting thing is though, I can scroll all the way down to say channel 24, audio channel 24 on the screen here, right, I'll just flip this to the EQ display, okay, now the faders here might be stuck still on uh, channel 17 or channel 9 to 17 or whatever, block of 8, but, now if I, like I said, scroll way up past what the Behringer is following in terms of its faders, and go to say channel 30 if I go to the EQ button which is there is on the EQ yeah and tweak look put it on put it on I'm actually tweaking the EQ for channel 30 so the good news is you can scroll around anywhere yeah and it doesn't matter that the faders aren't following it around right if you um, but the EQ does so that's the really weird thing about it is you can step up and down your arrange page to channels and that even goes like I'll scroll past my MIDI channels here and I'll go into my group channels for example right or let's say my effects channels okay I'll just drop down the equalizer page uh, panel for that so now I've scrolled way past all my audio tracks the BCF is still stuck monitoring channels 9 to 16 for the faders for volume okay but 
here I am in FX channel 2, let's say I had a, a, a reverb on that and I wanted to add some EQ if you look up here on the BCF view I'm in ok I'll just turn that on and you can see, or you should see that I've actually put four bands of EQ there on FX channel 2 now my fader may be stuck way back at banks nine to, uh, channels 9 to 16 but even on the FX channels, even on a group channel, I'll scroll to this group channel here, group 1 again I'll put my four bands of EQ on step up to page 2 to put the second two bands on and there you go, on group 1 here, group 1, the EQ is on and I can tweak my EQ for that uh, group then I can step up say and go, oh you know what, go past my MIDI channels here it's, it's scrolling slowly because the screen grab software's on but I'll go to audio channel 24 now and I'll put on my EQ there for my four bands and look, I can adjust my EQ on audio 24 and then if I go back here, look there you can see the EQ that was on audio 30 I'll go back down here, past my MIDI tracks here we go, group 1 the EQ's on for group 1, you can see that because the little green EQ lamp is lit here on the display on the header there's the EQ for that go back down here to the effects channels and there's the EQ I put on um, FX channel 2 so that's the good news although the faders and pan don't follow it around the EQ does and you'll find as I go further into this and show you next the inserts and the send uh, sections they also follow Cubase around so that's the good news but you may have noticed a little bit earlier in the video that once I got went past my audio tracks because the Behringer will follow whatever you've got on your arrange page in vertical order yeah. I went past my MIDI tracks I went down to my group track and there was some EQ there on group 1 but if you notice the BCF up here is still stuck saying audio 32 okay? but don't worry about that, you may have noticed that in the video earlier if I reach for my EQ, page 1, bottom frequency these four pots and I just go to tweak the uh, boost or cut for that bottom EQ even though up here it says audio 32 you'll notice here I am look group 1 I am actually adjusting the EQ for group 1 yeah and um, it only the, the BCF view here only changes when I go to change something on the BCF button wise yeah so if you step out of audio channels to group channels or FX channels the BCF view sticks until you press one of the buttons or step up and down a page button but if you go to tweak the EQs you will be tweaking the EQ for whichever is a selected track so don't worry about that